What's up everyone? Welcome back. This is Caden with Middle Class Millionaire. In our last video, we went over the different type of accounts that you can have as far as taxation, such as 401k, 403bs, 457s, IRAs, traditionals. We're going to get into what you can put into those accounts and what type of investments you usually see in those accounts. So let's start with IRAs, traditional IRAs, and even brokerage accounts. A lot of these type of accounts, you're going to see stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and some of my favorites are REITs, which are known as real estate investment trusts. So as far as stocks, for instance, when you purchase a stock in a company, you're actually purchasing a percentage of ownership into that company. So that's why it's always really important that you invest what you believe in. And that's what I always preach is just invest in companies that you yourself know that are good companies. My wife's favorite stock is Target. Well, I don't think she even knows I have a stock but we do give quite a bit of money to Target. And I sat there one day and I was like, why don't we just own Target or own a percentage of ownership? Because I'll get my money back eventually, right? But when it comes to stocks, there are different types of stocks. So you might've heard a name blue chip stocks. Well, a blue chip stock actually got its name from poker, believe it or not. So a blue chip represents the most valuable chip on the poker board. And so what that means when you refer to a blue chip stock is the most valuable stock in that industry. There's actually something called the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is comprised of 30 of the top companies in these type of sectors. And so whenever you refer to a blue chip stock or you hear somebody talk about blue chip stock, all that means is the most valuable company in that area. But you might have also heard of large cap stocks, mid cap stocks, small caps, and all that means is the capitalization or the capital of that company. So a large cap stock just means that a company has a capitalization of 10 billion or more. A mid cap stock are companies that have a capitalization of 2 billion to 10 billion. And then a small cap company is actually companies that are 2 billion and under. So whenever you hear people also talk about penny stocks, that doesn't mean the company is worth pennies. That just means that the share price is less than $5. At one point, Ford, in this recent downturn, dipped around $4 a share, brought into that range of a penny stock. But in 2019, Ford's revenue was $155 billion. So it doesn't mean that the company was small, it just meant that the share price dipped that low. So don't mistake most penny stocks for just small, minute companies. However, be careful whenever you start investing in penny stocks. At the current moment, there are over 2,800 stocks represented on the New York Stock Exchange. So you might be sitting there just kind of questioning like, how can I pick the right stock or the right stocks to add to my portfolio? Well, don't worry about that because there are ways that you can invest in indexes to get the best of both worlds. You're able to invest in stocks without having to pick them yourself if that's not something that you're into. Me, on the other hand, I enjoy looking up companies and the revenues and the profits and the, the liabilities of a company and picking which ones that are stable now and which ones have future growth. I usually follow along the steps of Warren Buffett and invest in the principles that Warren Buffett has. Warren Buffett usually doesn't invest in what the stock price is doing today. He actually looks at the guts of the company and he wants to get to know the financials of the company and to see where they are today and if that company is going to be a profitable company in the future. So enough about stocks. Let's actually talk about bonds now. So a bond is just a fixed income investment that is actually a loan between an investor and a borrower. Now hang on for a second. I'm not telling you to really borrow money from a company, but this is the other way around. You are giving money to a company in returns for a fixed level of interest or payments that you will receive. So most of the time this is between corporates or governments. So you can hear of like government bonds and you might have heard these in a local form. So like hospitals putting on bonds to add wings or a city to add a bond to, for growth of the city or a municipality. A corporate might actually have bonds out there to increase the amount of money coming into the company for short-term gain that they were actually going to pay back to the borrower. Now these are usually fixed income. They are less aggressive mostly. You can have everything from treasury bonds to junk bonds which are the everything from the most stable type of bonds being treasury bonds which are actually from the government all the way down to junk bonds or high yield bonds that are come from corporations or from most mortgage companies. And so depending on which type of bond you pick it could dictate what type of interest that you may receive but also could incorporate a lot of debt or unnecessary volatility into your portfolio. Now let's take a second and talk about mutual funds and ETFs. Well the grand scheme of things they are almost exactly alike it's just how they are traded. So a mutual fund and an ETF 
are just a pool of investments that are professionally managed by a fund manager and follow a specific investment objective. So have you ever heard of a large cap mutual fund? All that is, is just a mutual fund that's comprised of large capitalization companies, which we already talked about, is a company that, or a capitalization of over $10 billion or more. A small cap mutual fund is just companies that are $2 billion in capitalization or less. The real difference between a mutual fund and an ETF is that the way that they're traded. So an ETF, also known as an exchange traded fund, exchanged on the open market, just like on the New York Stock Exchange, be able to buy them like a normal company, but they are actually comprised of a fund of many companies. So a mutual fund actually trades at the end of the business day. So if you've ever invested in a mutual fund and watch what your investment's doing, as soon as you put money into that company, it doesn't seem like it does much because it hasn't traded and will actually make its trade at the end of the business day or the end of when the market closes. Not that one's better than the other, they both follow the same type of investment objective. So a large cap mutual fund will perform very similar to a large cap exchange traded fund. At the end of the day, they're just a fund of companies that are represented by the title of that fund. And sometimes where the fees of the mutual fund can be higher than the fees of an ETF, but not always. But because you have you are being professionally managed on that, and they have board of directors, they have many investors within there, there is usually a management fee. So we'll break those down later into another video so you can see what are the different things that you need to look at whenever you're picking a mutual fund. Now let's talk about one of my favorite investments, which is known as a REIT. A REIT, or a real estate investment trust, allows you to invest in real estate without all the headaches of investing in real estate. So wouldn't we all like to own many properties? But you ask anybody who actually invests in physical real estate, there's a lot of headaches that are involved, such as what happens if the water heater breaks, or if the foundation sinks, or if you have no tenants, or picking the right real estate. Well, REITs take a lot of those headaches out. REIT allows you to invest in real estate in different sectors. This isn't always just homes. So like store capital, for instance, Store capital is a REIT that is comprised of commercial real estate. So these are a lot of companies such as like Ashley's Furnitures that are owned by Store Capital. And so Store Capital will actually receive monthly income from these companies in forms of their leases that are actually passed down to shareholders. One thing I love about REITs is a real estate investment trust has to dish out a lot of their earnings or a lot of the revenues that that company receives to shareholders in order for them to avoid a lot of taxes. Now, unfortunately, that does pass on the taxing to the shareholder or to us, but you get streams of income that come in. Most of these will actually pay monthly, but some pay quarterly or annually. So just be careful about which one you invest in. So I love the streams of income that come into my account because it's a form of passive income that are coming from real estate that I didn't have the headache of picking. And I don't have to worry about what happens if the roof falls off or if a tornado comes through and wipes out the, the building. The cool thing about REITs is that you can have real estate in many different sectors, such as, such as the medical industry. So one of my my favorite REITs that I own is Medical Properties Trust or MPW. So Medical Properties Trust has over 385 properties in their portfolio. So whenever I buy a share of MPW, I'm investing in 385 properties that I didn't have to do anything for, but I'm giving money to the company to go out there and buy more types of holdings so that I can have for a long-term growth and for stable income that'll come into my portfolio. Another REIT to look at is Realty Income or Stock Ticker O. Clever name, Realty Income. This company has over 6,500 long-term lease agreements with companies. And some of these properties that we see every day that Realty Income owns are ones known as Walgreens, Dollar General, Ulta Beauty, and many more in their portfolio. So these are very stable companies that each and every one of us shop at every day. And this company owns the building that these companies are actually leasing. And what I love about Realty Income, it has over a 15% annualized rate of return since 1994. And they have paid out over 600 consecutive monthly dividends to shareholders. That just goes to show you how stable that company is and how much money you can receive into your portfolio over the life of your investing. And there are many types of REITs that are out there. You'd be surprised of which ones actually own the buildings of places that you like to shop at every day. After all that, you're probably scratching your head and just, holy smokes, I just received a lot of information in a short amount of time. But don't worry, you can do two things. You can always go back to the beginning of the video, watch it slowly so you understand. And whenever you're going over a topic you don't understand, just Google 
and kind of look at what I'm talking about and you might find different type of representations. And two, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm because this will actually put my video in front of many others to see these and will actually help my channel grow. Also, make sure to subscribe. I've seen that I've gotten numerous views, but only a handful of you are actually subscribing. So I'm watching you. In the last video, we show the brokerage accounts that I use. So the reason I'm so passionate about M1 is because it allows me to invest in many different type of companies without actually owning the full share. So a lot of these stocks and a lot of these mutual funds or ETFs, they can get pretty pricey. And no pun intended, Google, what a share of Google cost. And you'd be surprised like, man, I don't really have $1,000 to throw in these companies. But what I love about M1 is that you can have fractional shares. So if you only have $20 to invest, you can own a percentage of ownership in different type of companies without owning the full share. You still get to reap the benefits without having to dish out a lot of money up front, allowing you to build your account over time. M1 actually has a great thing going on right now. If you invest $100 into the account, you get $30 back by using my link. So I just earned you a 30% return without doing anything, without even picking one company. So make sure you use the link below for a free $30. And I also mentioned Webull. And Webull is actually giving away free stocks by just opening up your account with them by, re by using my link. This is a limited time, so you actually get free shares. When I opened mine, I got two free shares of Ford Motor Company. And as I mentioned, their revenues in 2019 was 155 billion, and I got two free shares of them. So don't waste this opportunity and get your free shares today by using my link below. And don't waste another day without investing. And always remember to save, invest, and plan for the future, because it'll be here before you know it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.